All right, welcome. This is day two of our 30 for 30 on the meaning and significance of the resurrection of Jesus. So quick video tonight. I want to talk about what exactly happened in the moment that Jesus went from being dead to being alive again. Now, in talking about that, we know a lot about what happened prior to the resurrection of Jesus. We know that he really died, that Pilate gave permission to Joseph of Arimathea to take the body along with Nicodemus, and they anointed the body with, with oil. They, they, they put spices on it for preservation, and, and then took the dead corpse of Christ and wrapped it in, in, in linens and uh, a shroud and placed it in a tomb that had never ha held anyone else. Okay, so then, then the, it is sealed by this stone, and the stone is, is then, then sealed. It, it's, it's pushed into a groove, and then there's a, a later a seal put on it by Pilate. And, and then um, there's a guard, uh, at least one guard, maybe two guards posted there by Pilate. On the day of the resurrection, the women are coming to, to do some uh, work on the body, and they're like, oh, what are we going to do? We, we, we haven't thought about this detail. How are we going to get the stone rolled away? Well, they arrive to the tomb, and shortly before morning or, or thereabouts, there's a huge earthquake, uh, something like an earthquake, and then an angel of the Lord comes down and, and rolls the stone away, sits there, and, and the, the body of Jesus is gone. What happened in that moment? Uh, all we see when, 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 as the women go in and report, and then the others come in and report later, John and Peter, uh, what we see is grave clothes folded up, okay? The head, the head wrap that Jesus had on folded up. Why is that detail in there? Well, I want to go back to Lazarus in, in, in John 11 and speak just briefly about the details in these two resurrection accounts. There's not a lot of resurrection accounts in history, so let's take a look at what's going on here. Well, in John 11, with Lazarus' resurrection, what happens is Lazarus has been in a tomb for several days, rotting uh, as a corpse, and then Jesus uh, calls him out of the tomb with his own voice. And so, uh, Lazarus is reanimated, and, and you know he, like Jesus, was wrapped in these grave clothes. And so the difference here is that Lazarus emerges from the tomb, stumbling around with his grave clothes on, like hopping around. He's got these, these grave clothes on. He's, he's wrapped up. And, and so they have to take the grave clothes off of him. And the really bittersweet thing about this is, okay, Mary and Martha have their brother back. Lazarus is back. Jesus' friend, Lazarus is back. But Lazarus dies again. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty terrible. I mean, having to die once is bad, but dying twice, that stinks. Now, so Jesus, though, he doesn't have his grave clothes on. He left his grave clothes behind. And, and I think there's a real significance in that, is that in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, it speaks of Jesus being resurrected a spiritual body. Now, when you say spiritual body, you have a tendency to think, well, spiritual, that doesn't sound very like tangible and physical. You know, like, uh, you know, like, did he, did he not have a true body like we have? Well, yeah, he had a true body like we have. But, but what he took on when he became born of the Virgin Mary is they took on a body that would see decay or corruption. You know, and so the spiritual body is, is a body fit for the new heaven and new earth. Uh, it's a glorified body, a spiritual body. So spiritual, when I say spiritual, when I say, hey, you know, that's a spiritual man right there. I don't mean that he's a ghostly person or, or a person who doesn't have physicality. You know, Jesus had physicality. He ate and drank and, and, uh, and touched people. And, you know, there's real matter there in Adam. So, so what happened with Jesus? Uh, he, he left the corruption behind. He left the grave clothes behind. He left the old body, the body in its old state behind and took on what it is to be a spiritual body, you know, a spirit body. And I think that's, that's crucial for us because none of us wants to die uh, once, but to die twice really stinks. And, and you, know, you and I all know that uh, it's day two of this uh, journey in March here, and, and we're all concerned about the coronavirus and, and what might happen and, and, and that there could be thousands of deaths in our state, country, or, or wherever, you know, this is an epidemic. And so the, the terrible news is that we're all going to die. Uh, we will die. Our bodies will be corrupted. And what, what happens 
in this spiritual body that we're going to have here, uh, if we're in Christ, is that when we're raised, our bodies are changed. And, they're, and one, one commentator says that they don't evaporate in the spirit or lose the marks of what distinguishes them here on earth. You know, I'm still probably going to be 6'5". You know, that's how I'm distinguished. People see me as this, and, and you'll be recognized, but the difference is going to be that our bodies will be a full and appropriate expression and organ of their spiritual life, still retaining the individuality of them, but independent of the limitations by which they are now confined. So the laws of physics probably don't apply to them uh, of, this, of this current creation, nor does the sin uh, that they are under now apply, nor does death apply. So the good news is when you're resurrected along with Jesus as a spiritual body, you will not die again. The second death can't get you. Uh, the first one might have got you, but the eternal death can't get you. And you will be exactly what you were created to be, which is forevermore in fellowship with God, eternally enjoying Him and glorifying Him. That's it. So no sin will rule over you anymore. No death will rule over you. No, no decay. And, and you will leave the grave closed behind. You know, th there's none of this halvesy resurrection stuff. Uh, it's a different kind of resurrection that Jesus experienced. So, so we think, hey, you know, the best best uh, guess I have of what exactly happened there is the resurrection of life. The one who is uh, the life-giving spirit. Remember when Jesus created all things, he didn't have a, a human body like we did. That happened in time and space when he took that on. He's life-giving spirit. And so he becomes what he is and is, and is re, and reanimated, leaves the grave closed behind, again, into a true physical body, a human body, probably like Adam's before the fall, what it was made to be, glorified, though. And, and that's good news. You know, we, we, don't, we won't live in a, in a state of broken fallenness, but we're going to eat of the tree of life forever with God. So this is good news. Okay. That's day two. Stay tuned for more insights into the meaning and significance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, as, as you prepare for it, as you get primed for celebrating Easter with us, remember April 12th, 1030 a.m. at Trinity Presbyterian Church, 324 West Main Street. Come on and join us. We'd love to have you. Hope you can be with us for that uh, as we celebrate the most wonderful news you could ever hear. It's that Jesus, uh, whom those women were looking for, just as he said he was, resurrected, not there, waiting for the disciples in Galilee, a spiritual body resurrected. All right, take care. God bless.